Grace and peace to you guys. Psalms 11 verse 1 says, In the Lord I put my trust. How do you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? Verse 2, For though the wicked bends their bow and they're ready, their arrow upon the string, that they may privately or privately shoot at the upright in heart. But if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids, eyelids try the children of man. The Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked, and he that loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and horrible tempests. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loves righteousness, and his countenance will behold the upright. Bless the Lord on that. All right, man, peoples, we're going to talk about fainting again. Yes, I have done a video on fainting before, but I just want to show you guys because I think it's so important to boxing. It's one of the things I think that is not spoken a lot about in boxing. And it makes a big difference, you know, when you want to really go up levels, it makes a big difference in how, how your boxing evolves and becomes be better and better over time. All right, we'll start this off by... Atu Gatti versus Floyd Mayweather. So here, Atu Gatti, you see him throw uh, three jabs. You see him throw a straight lead right. Doesn't catch Floyd Mayweather. But more important thing is, Floyd is fainting as if he's going to engage Atu Gatti, which is why Gatti even makes that response. All right, let me see if you guys can see what I'm talking about. So here's the clip right here. You see Floyd faint, faint, and then he steps back. Watch it again. Faint faints, and then he steps back finally because Gaddy's actually in line with his head, the shots. So he has to stay out of range. There it is again. All right? Now remember that because that was in round one. And those faints become very important later on in the fight to make Floyd less and less predictable. So here, in round three, you see Floyd more staying his ground. Gaddy gets him to step back. Forces him to step back because Gotti is actually dipping and changing head slots. And at the same time, I want to show you guys something. Because I don't think you guys can see the subtleties here. Gotti's actually pivoting or stepping to the side. He's not coming straight at Floyd. He's actually pivoting. So here he is. There it is right there. There it is right there. See him shuffle, he shuffle to the side? One, two. One, two. Got it? So by him shuffling to the side, it pushes Floyd back. And Floyd goes back right here. One, two, slide back, slide back, slide back, because the video's on the loop, okay? And then he pivots and then he check hooks at Gaddy, but he doesn't hit him because Gaddy didn't move into Floyd, so he kind of fainted as if he was going to move into Floyd and gets Floyd to react. But the more important thing is Floyd is constantly showing his intention to move forward, even though he has to be pushed back, and that pays off here. It pays off here because now Floyd, he actually doesn't just faint that he's coming to engage. He literally engages here. But at an angle where Arturo Gatti just can't hit him back. And Gatti throws his jab. There it is right here. Boom. There's the jab. Right? He throws the jab to try and catch Floyd. But Floyd is at an angle behind Gatti's shoulder. So that's why Floyd is catching him like that. So if I, if I, if I throw a punch behind your shoulder, when you throw out your jab, you're not going to hit me, right? So what happened initially here, these feints, Floyd literally started to make good on those feints. Okay, but initially because he was cautious, he would faint coming forward to see what Gaddy was going to do. And Gaddy was ready to rage war, man. So he saw what, what Gaddy was about. And gradually, he uh, started putting punches together, and then he crashed the Gaddy later on. All right? So that's why I told you, feigning is very important. Feigning is it's quite important. And in some fights, it's more important than the jab sometimes. All right? And the people won't tell you this, but it's true. So, Juan Manuel Marquez. Again, he faints as if he's going to come at the gentleman who's coming in on him. I think that's Juan... Uh, that is Juan Diaz. Okay? Faints as if he's going to come into Juan Diaz. Freezes him up and makes Juan Diaz... Uh, lift his two guard and block block his head. Why is that so? Because it looks as if Marquez is going to throw a lead right. He's going to throw a right. See? That's what's happening. Now Marquez doesn't step into Diaz, but he causes Diaz to freeze up for a second. That's the whole point behind that feint. So Marquez steps back and then he 
That's as if he's going to come in. And Diaz will bite on that feint. Isn't that cool? He does it again to Manny Pacquiao here, but this time he steps into Manny Pacquiao. There it is right there. Now, it's not really a step in. Because <laughs> he actually didn't step forward. Watch it again. It's a big step as if he's going in, but he really hasn't moved anywhere. And it causes Pacquiao to lift his guard right there. Not cool. And Pacquiao does the very same thing with uh, Oscar De La Hoya. He steps in, pushes Oscar De La Hoya back, steps in again, and steps in again. And he's actually pushing uh, Oscar De La Hoya backward by doing that. And Oscar was trying to come in on him. <laughs> he pushes him back without throwing a single punch. I think he throws a right hook, actually, a little later on. But without throwing a single punch, he's pushing back his opponent. That's more effective than even a jab. Isn't that crazy? So that's why I told you fainting is very important in boxing. Let me show you a couple others. This one is actually an offensive faint. What I mean by that is, literally, the guy was looking as if he was going to do one thing and then he does another thing. So, as you can see here, he drops the level to look as if he's going to hook to the body. Mares actually bends in to block the shot. You can see that there. And he gets caught to the head. Watch it again. See, Mara drops his hand and his guard <laughs> to protect his body. And he gets hit to the head. It's nice and fluid. You can see this again with Marcus Maidana versus Adrian Broner. To the body, but oh! Broner thought he was coming to the body. And he gets hooked to the head. There's several other incidents. Here, this, this feint comes off of the jabs. So, he... Uh, Throws two jabs, Manny Pacquiao, and he faints as if he's going to throw another jab, and that freezes up Bradley for just a second for him to start crashing him on the ropes. See the jab, jab, faint the jab, boom. <laughs> All right. This is another um, offensive feint. Does as if he's going to go to the body of Pacquiao. Pacquiao braces for it. You see him lean in there, bracing for that body shot. It's to the head, man. <laughs> All right. This is another offensive feint. Floyd does as if he's going to left hook uh, Conor McGregor. So Conor McGregor lifts his elbow, embraces his hand for the shot. And then Floyd actually hits him with the overhand right. Yeah, it's pretty fast, so I'm just going to show you. So yeah. Feint the hook, boom. Feint the hook, boom. Feint the hook, boom. Feint the hook, boom. All right? It's pretty quick. Klitschko, man. Klitschko. See, I, these guys just don't know things, man. Otherwise, Klitschko... So, Klitschko does he's going to jab Anthony Joshua. He's got Anthony Joshua, actually. He got Anthony Joshua reacting to him. He's just leaning in. It's just a lean-in thing. Watch it here. Jab, lean, lean. Jab, lean, lean. Jab, lean, jab, lean. Jab, lean. Jab, lean, jab, lean, jab, lean. <laughs> jab, lean, jab, lean. Got him biting. Got Joshua biting on them feints. Huh. You got a guy biting on feints like that. But this goes kind of limited. He doesn't know how to change levels. Feint a slip of the jab. Slip to the outside of Joshua's jab. And then do something about that. He don't know about that stuff, so. I'm going to show you what, what you could have done. This is one of the funniest things ever. It's funny because Alfredo Angulo, he bites on one of the weirdest feints ever. So I'm going to show you it in slow motion. I'm going to point out what is happening. Canelo throws his hand way over here. It's a distraction. Angulo closes up first, bracing for the punch. And then he actually opens out the slot. one of the weirdest things. Airsline Lara fell for it too. Here Lomachenko did the same thing. So Lomachenko just threw his hand to the side, got the other guy going with it. He catches him with the uppercut. Boom. And Canelo does it again. Airsline Lara throws the hand out. Lara opens up because what happens is you're committed to blocking and then you see this hand going by you and you're like, whoa, okay, I don't have to blah blah. You get clocked. Boom. 
Now you can actually dip right into the punch. That's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, there's another offensive feint. So what happens is you throw a jab, throw another jab, kind of like Manny Pacquiao did. But instead of Manny Pacquiao just kind of fainting as if he wasn't going to do nothing, you throw a third jab and you hook off the jab. Here, this is another feint. What happened was Oscar had his guard up. And Floyd's goal was to get around Oscar's guard. So how did he do it? He jabbed to the guard and then he stabbed down low and then he came up top. So he lifted Oscar's guard up. See, he lifted the guard up. So Oscar's guard was higher than normal. Jab down low and that opened up. That brought his hands down and then he hooked over it. See, feints all have a purpose. You gotta know what it is. This is the Klitschko thing I was talking about. So you get a guy to bite on your feints, it means you can slip him and hook him to the inside. You draw his guard up top and then you hook him, man. How do you do that? Let me, let me explain what I mean. So for instance, there are two things I could do. I could actually draw him so he'll throw his lead right. I could slip past his lead right and land a, a shot down the middle. Or what I could do is after I lean in and make him throw the jab, I slip to the outside of the jab and I land my left hook straight down the middle. But I have to change levels. I got to go low and come back up high. That was the trick. Now you got to get because Josh would be baiting. He just he just sitting down there biting on them jabs. You know you don't have somebody biting on your jab like that. You got to do something with it. But Klitschko, man, he don't know how to do that stuff. All right. This is beautiful. Sergey Kovalev versus uh, Jean Pascal. He ain't doing nothing. He just he's just stepping in. Lean, lean, lean. It's a stutter step or a shuffle. All right. So he's leaning in. Just by leaning in, it makes the opponent feel that you're gonna throw something, right? Shuffle, shuffle. And he actually provokes uh, Pascal to think that he's going to throw a, a right, a lead right. So he, you see the jab come out. He's pushing him back without throwing a punch. Isn't that cool? That's the beauty of feints, man. Canelo does it, but in a much more exaggerated way. But the reason um, this works here is because he's provoking Khan to um, actually throw his jab. And he wants Khan to throw the jab so he can counter over the jab. So he was just watching the seed and get Khan to do it. Actually pushed Khan back to against the ropes. He could have actually forced the issue and actually got Khan, Khan up in the corner and land some combinations on it. But of course you gotta watch for the lead right too. Or the counter right. Pacquiao versus Shane Mosley. Got for Mosley to throw a jab and then boom boom. Watch the movement again. Dipped. Looked like he was gonna throw something. He fainted as if he was gonna throw the, the right and then he threw the right. He got Mosley to block it first, and then boom, boom. All right, so it's an offensive feint. This is a defensive feint. Floyd tries to pull counter, realizes he can't. Goes on the pivot, dips, and then rolls. So that's why you need to know how to bob and weave, dip and roll. You need to know everything in boxing, man. You must be able to do all of it. Dip and roll. Dip, roll, pivot off the, the front foot. All right, that's a defensive thing. So Floyd is always in balance. Here, Pacquiao bites on that. Lead left hand right there. Lead left hand and the front pivot steps in. Bites right there. Bites again. Boom. All right. That's a faint shuffling in. That's a, kind of like what Sergey Kovalev was doing. But Pacquiao stands his ground. He kind of pushed back a little bit. So that's why I say feints are very important in boxing. Um, it, it definitely adds to your game when you can faint very well as you're coming in. And that's why I said Mikey Garcia, he's a lot more subtle than people think. You got to watch it, what kind of feints he does and what he's setting up for later on in the fight. That's all I'm saying. There's a lot more complexity to, to the fighters. So anyway. That's something you have to have in your repertoire. That's something you should start from day one using feints. As the, day, the first day that you, and there are many kinds of feints, and um, the first day that you start boxing, besides learning how to throw the jab, learning basic defense, 
um, learn how to change head slots and stuff like that, you should also know how to faint those things. Because it's just natural and organic that it's almost like you're going to do the thing and you must feel sincere. It feels like you want to do it, but you just don't complete it. That's all. And that's they're very important for the next level. It's not about fainting fast or anything like that. It's just 